No, folks, I'm not trying to increase my booty bump capabilities. Instead, what you just saw there is a lateral tilt of the pelvis, and that is occurring for a few different reasons, and it might be impacting your hip range of motion, and most importantly, it could be impacting your performance on things such as step-ups. Hello, everybody. Zach Couples, physical therapist here, and folks, I'm gonna deep dive into exactly what is going on when you see someone's hips dropping in the manner that you just saw me on that step down. I'm gonna do so by illustrating a case that I just worked with where we had this exact issue and it was leading to knee pain on this particular activity. So this individual who's a higher level golfer was feeling some knee pain on step downs. We went under the hood, saw what was going on, gave him a few moves to, to deal with that and he was able to do the step downs pain free. Now folks, I'm going to preface this. I'm gonna get a little bit into the weeds with this one because we're gonna talk numbers, we're gonna talk a little bit of anatomy and biomechanics, so if you aren't really like a coach or clinician, you might wanna watch this video. Or maybe you could watch another video like this, anything like that. So just to give you a heads up on that, folks, because this is really a case study that I think will be very useful and hopefully you find it beneficial. So this person who I'm gonna talk about today is a fairly high level golfer who's been at our facility, Elevate Sports Performance and Healthcare in Las Vegas. If you're there, please go check us out. Um, but I've worked with him on and off over the last couple of years. I hadn't seen him in a hot minute. And he came to me a couple, let's see, this is in April, early April of 2022. And he was telling me that he was dealing with some right knee pain um, hurts on step downs, would hurt to put pressure on it, things of that nature. And like he said, he's been working in our gym for an extended period of time. They've been working on a lot of recapturing internal rotation. That seemed to be the biggest rate limiting step to his success in this front. And so a lot of hinging, deadlift variations, things of that nature, but the problem was is the numbers weren't really budging. And so let's go ahead and we'll look at the assessment that I did with him on this first session and I'll talk you through what I'm seeing. But I don't have it on here. He's a narrow infrasternal angle individual. And I just want you to go ahead and take a look at the numbers and think about what stands out to you. Because I'll tell you what stands out to me. So. The big things that I'm going to be focusing on right now are going to be these three variables right here. Straight leg raise, we can see it's asymmetrical. The left is a little bit more than the right. But then look at the asymmetries in the hip rotation. Now, he's got a lot of external rotation, we can see, which is very typical of a narrow infrasternal angle. But notice the asymmetry. He's got less relative external rotation on the left and less relative internal rotation on the right. So what's going on there? I'm glad you asked. When you see this type of presentation where I see a drop off of external rotation on the left and a drop off of internal rotation on the right, even if this is within physiological normal, because normal external rotation of the hip is 60 degrees. You're dealing with a flat turn compensatory strategy, as named so eloquently by Daddy O Pops, Bill Hartman, my mentor. Now you might be wondering what the flat turn entails. Well, don't worry, your boy Big Z is gonna have you covered for that. Basically, what happens is if I have a narrow infrasternal angle individual, with a counter nutated sacrum, that's very typical. That's how we get that large amount of external rotation. We see an interesting thing going on at the pelvic floor. Here's what the pelvic floor looks like from a bottom up perspective, if we were to draw the, where the relative expansion and compressive actions are occurring. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the pelvic floor from the top down. So there's your pubic symphysis, Pelvis, we'll say the sacrum is, is there, pelvis. And I'm gonna break the, the pelvic floor into quadrants now. And so what you're gonna see is you got uh, anterior and posterior. This will be left, this will be right. Apologies for my chicken scratch, but I am a doctor. And so with a narrow infrasternal angle person, they're going to have a concentric posterior pelvic floor. So red equals concentric right? 
And that's because the sacrum is counter-nutating. And so when the sacrum counter-nutates, you're going to see the coccyx moving more forward. That means the posterior pelvic floor is going to be contracted and pulling that more forward. The front of the pelvis, consequently, is going to be more eccentric in this case. Because if I squeeze the back, I got to push stuff. In this case, that's the viscera, the guts, and the goods more forward. And this would be kind of your layer one. This is just based on that individual structure. Can't change it. Lady Gaga, what you going to do about it? Now, let's look at how a flat turn could potentially occur. Now, with a flat turn, you got to think about it this way. This is kind of like the first layer of compensation with a lot of individuals is they will go asymmetrical. And anytime I'm utilizing a compensatory strategy, I'm going to be inherently restricting motion. And so we have to look at, well, how could I contrive of a situation that would allow me to turn a bit more to the right and the reason why we're going to be turning right is because of the inherent organ asymmetry that we have. Um, that alters the, the pelvic floor presentation. And so what I could do, and this is what we see, is I could increase muscle activity on the left posterior. And what that's going to do is that's going to cause me to turn to the right. Because if I contract muscles back here, it's going to push me forward. And so then subsequently what ends up happening is you get a concentric orientation of the right anterior outlet, and that helps facilitate the turn. And so if I pull this up on the model here, I'm going to be, again, I got a narrow ISA. I'm going to be pushing the front of the pelvis on the left forward, and I'm going to be pulling the right backwards, and that's going to initiate that flat turn. And the reason why we call it a flat turn is because the axis is straight up and down, so there's no pelvic obliquity with it at all as I do it. And so what you essentially get is you get stuff on the back that's concentric, and it could be the bottom part. This is usually seen when there's a loss of a straight leg raise on the left, which is typical for a flat turn. And you can also get the top part of the pelvis pushing forward as well. When this happens, when I get the, the posterior upper on the left pushing forward, you see an increase in internal rotation on the left hip and a decrease of left external rotation. And then, because I'm turning back this way, I get the reverse action of that. Because I'm reducing muscular activity on the right anterior outlet, you're going to see an increase in external rotation on the right and a decrease of internal rotation. But now, I say all these things, but there's something in this individual's numbers that didn't really jive with this flat turn strategy. Why is it that the left straight leg raise would be more than the right? This doesn't make much sense because in a flat turn presentation, I should have a decrease on the left in comparison to the right. It'll make more sense once we get into the second session. But I want to go over what I went with on this first session when I worked with this individual. And so I gave him a quadruped on elbows left hip shift first because the name of the game when you're working with a flat turn is if I got someone who's narrow and they're turning that way, I need to try to find ways to turn them to the left. And so the way we're going to do that, because I have a drop off of internal rotation on the right, is I'm going to do forward reaching activities with that right knee. When I reach forward at 90 degrees especially, that's going to increase internal rotation on the right side. And then because I'm turning the pelvis back to the left, because I'm increasing posterior space, that theoretically should increase the available external rotation that this individual should have. And so we started with a quadruped on elbows, left hip shift. The reason why I went with this is because we're going to get that left turn. And also because he's on quadruped on elbows, that's going to promote more anterior expansion because of the prone position. Gravity is going to push stuff more anteriorly. Great for improving internal rotation. And the second move that we did was an internal rotation roll right to left. So all that is is that's him reaching with his right leg and his right arm up and across, again, to drive a left turn. And after we did these two moves, 
we were able to increase the right hip internal rotation from 10 degrees to a full 40. Left internal rotation was at about 30. So pretty good, but not great. And so I had him start with these two moves, and then we were going to see what happened. Fast forward to three weeks later. Guy comes to me, says right knee was hurting quite a bit, almost had to withdraw from a tournament, but he didn't. He crushed it instead. And he was having a difficult time with squatting. Step downs were very uncomfortable. Wanted to see what the next step was. And so I went and did the assessment. And here's what we got on our second appointment. And so you can see we got uh, some improvement. Um, one thing, the Ober's test was a little bit better. It was minus 10 before, so minus 5 now. And then if we look at our hip measures, check this out. So... Overall, have an improvement of internal rotation at rest, especially on the right. He was 15, was 10 in the beginning. And now we got 15 on the right. So not a crazy improvement, but an improvement. We're also seeing a drop off of ER on the right. I don't think this is a bad thing because seeing IR increase on the right and ER decrease on the right, that means we're getting at least some semblance of a turn back to the left. And then check this out, folks. The straight leg raise was a little bit more asymmetrical. We ended up increasing the left even further. And so I'm like, huh, that's interesting. I wonder what's going on. And so what I opted to do was I wanted to progress some of the moves that this individual was doing to see if we could elicit further internal rotation improvements. And this is where I figured out why the left straight leg raise was more than the right. I'll show you the first move that we did. The first move that I gave this individual was a quadruped hip shift. And so the goal with this was I was gonna have him shift the left hip up and most importantly, press the right hip or knee down. And the aim by doing this is if I'm reaching forward with the right knee, remember if I reach forward, that's gonna help me recapture internal rotation on that side. And then I'm creating space in the left posterior part of my body, which is gonna initiate the turn to the left. And this has been a progression that we've worked on for some time in this particular session. Like I had done other stuff to clear open some space on the uh, left side. This was where we went next. And so, what I ended up doing was I had him get a nice full reach, no tuck, get that kneecap pressure, and then hike the hip up like so. And as you're doing this, you just wanna make sure that you're not sliding out that way, all right? And so it looks like this, I'm here, keeping the feet down, and I'm doing that shift. Progressively, I feel more right glute engaging, and I feel left inner thigh, just like that. Now. It was actually this move right here that I noticed the right lateral tilt that was occurring because what was happening, and I'll show you from uh, the back view, onlyfans.com forward slash Zach. But when he attempted to do the hip shift, what he was doing was this right here. So he was side bending his trunk, or you could think about it this way as he was laterally tilting his pelvis to try to get the turn. And he actually noticed that when he did that, he was feeling a lot more groin. And the reason why that is, is because he's shifting his center of mass to the right, that's creating a tug on the left inner thigh, because the left inner thigh is gonna be in more of an, uh, it's eccentric uh, position, when, which we want the flip-flop of that, essentially. And so that was the first clue that I thought, huh, something was going on here. And so what I did to fix that was I simply just manually cued him. I said, hey, reach this right hip down like that and then perform the hike as you were. And he felt a lot of glute engaged as he did that. And so you want to make sure that you channel your inner Huey Lewis and keep the hip square because it's hip to be square. So it's reach, hips are square, inhale, exhale, right kneecap down, hike the left hip. It's normal for you to transfer some weight to your left side on this one, don't worry. And after that first move, we were able to increase right hip internal rotation to 30. Left was at 20, so unchanged. 
And this was where I figured out why he wasn't recapturing full internal rotation, as well as why some of the uh, things where he was weight bearing through his leg were becoming problematic. And that's because of a compensatory strategy that this person was doing when he had to drive internal rotation on the right. And that is a lateral tilt of the pelvis towards the working leg, just like this. And so when this individual was in quadruped, what essentially happens is you see that the hip kind of drops down. So if you're looking at quadruped this way, that. And look at what happens to the relative rotation, folks, when I do that. If I drop the pelvis to the right, but I don't change any orientation within the pelvis, you can see that the uh, ischium gets closer to the femur. That's a deduction in internal rotation. And so if someone has an inability to create internal rotation on the right side, what they will do to create that internal rotation is laterally tilt the pelvis to the right. That's going to give the appearance that there's more internal rotation, but it's done so via a compensatory strategy. And here's the thing, folks. When I do this lateral tilt to the pelvis, this left leg, you can see, kind of gets longer than the right, or at least it appears that way. And so now this is likely the reason why we saw the left straight leg raise ma uh, magnified in comparison to the right, because when I elongate this, this leg, I can create a little bit more of an external rotation action, which is going to allow the straight leg raise to be increased in comparison to the uh, right side. And so that's why the straight leg raise didn't necessarily make sense for this particular individual. And we saw this compensatory strategy with all of the moves that I had given him. And so with the quadruped hip shift, I just made sure to coach him so he was keeping that pelvis down. But then my next two strategies that we went with focused on shifting the other direction while preserving relative motion or increasing relative motion in the pelvis. So here's what we went with next. Now, before we dive into more moves, you might be thinking, Zach, you kind of glossed over the breathing piece a little bit. I'm still struggling coaching that during specific movements because I know, based on some of your other videos, that enhances range of motion to the nth degree. Or what is going on with that? Why should I incorporate that with my clients? Well, if you want to expedite your warm-ups, so that way you don't have to spend as much time on warm-ups, you can address total body mobility, or you wanna really maximize the loading strategy that you're doing in the gym so your clients actually feel what's supposed to be working. So like if they're squatting, they're not feeling their hip flexors in their back, but they're actually feeling quads and glutes. Well, you wanna check out my seminar, Human Matrix, which goes over all of that and then some. Folks, if you're watching this in 2022, I have a few dates available in the US. May 28th and 29th will be in Seattle, Washington. August 6th and 7th is gonna be in Boston, Massachusetts. And if you're in Slovenia, October 15th and 16th, I'll be there. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the rest of the video, but please check, this out, check us out, zackcouples.com forward slash seminars. Give it a shot. After doing the quadruped hip shift, we were able to increase right hip internal rotation to 30 degrees and left hip internal rotation to 20. But that's not enough. Call me Joe, I need more and more. And so my thought was at this point, well, huh, if my man is tilting the pelvis laterally to the right, what if I worked on something that would tilt it to the left? And this is where I chose a standing hip approximation exercise to elicit this very goal. And so what you're gonna do for this, and what I did, was I gave, uh, put right foot on a block, I put the uh, hands on uh, the, the desk like so, and I had him push his hip back slightly, no tucking, nothing like that, because there's a lot of external rotation involved. And then all I had him do was, just like before, I was reaching the kneecap down and hiking the hip up. It's the same song and dance here, except now I'm gonna push the right foot into the ground and hike the left hip up, just like that. Now, the interesting thing was when he was doing it, he wasn't getting a whole lot of right glute and he wasn't getting much inner thigh either. It was mostly quad. And so there were a couple tweaks that I had seen or that I had to make because I seen him doing a couple things that were screwing it up. And so one of the two things that would happen would be either 
my guy would just flex the hip up like this, which is not gonna get the ship, shift. And then guess what? If I flex the hip, that allows that lateral tilt downward to occur, which we don't want necessarily, right? So instead, what I had him do to fix that was I had him keep his left leg back, straighten the knee, and then hike that way. But then I had to be careful on that because what ended up happening was when he did that hip hike, he just ended up leaning his foot outward like that. And so the cue was to just make sure that the foot stays flat on the board as he does the hip hike like this. If he was feeling frisky, he could squat down a little bit, but you really want to ensure that the hip is hiked up. And once we got those things right there, he was able to feel inner thigh, able to feel some quad on the right and glute on the right. Inner thigh I was referring to is on the left. And I just had him hold that and breathe. And the cool thing after that move, folks, is we were able to increase the right hip internal rotation to 40 degrees, and then the left was at about 30. So we needed to kick it up a notch next in a more dynamic fashion to see if we could get that last bit of internal rotation on the left side. If I can get that, then I know that I've completed the turn. The last thing we did in this case was actually come to the step down. And so when I saw this gentleman doing the step down, he was clearly getting that drop into the right hip and that was eliciting some knee pain during. And he was actually doing it from a pretty high step. So I did two things. One, I dropped the step down to, instead of I think he was doing uh, 14 inches, we dropped it down to about four or five DC blocks. And then I cued the same hip hike that we did with the approximation activity. And that did wonders, it took away the knee pain. So what that looked like was he was holding on for support hike the hip up, keep the leg back, just like the other move, and go stupidly slow, like a five second eccentric, making sure you breathe throughout, and then you just come up however. Just make sure that that inner thigh is engaged via the hip hike, not actively squeezing it. And so you can see from the back view that I'm keeping the hips a lot more even as I do this, and I'm not getting that drop that we saw in the beginning of the video, and keeping the hip high, that's engaging the glute and the quad a significant amount more, and I'm getting a little toasty. I'm really grateful that I got to work through this particular case because the one population that I would say I was struggling with in terms of being able to recapture range of motion consistently was someone who presented with a flat turn presentation. And because of this, I'm able to contrive a four-step sequence that you can utilize to improve someone's movement capabilities if they're presenting with this asymmetrical strategy. So the first step that we're gonna do is stack. It goes without saying, if you don't have the ability to create that normal respiratory mechanic strategy where we get expansion in all directions and compression in all directions during inhalation and exhalation respectively, it's going to be very difficult to be able to elicit any sustainable movement changes. And especially so, it's going to be challenging to drive any rotation. Fortunately, this individual, he's been at our gym for a long time. This is one thing that we do extremely well at our facilities. We emphasize this concept. From there, the next step you gotta do if you present with someone with a flat turn is you need to expand or increase the left posterior pelvis. This is going to increase left ER. And so you could see with a lot of the moves that I had given, we were doing things where we were turning the pelvis to the left. That was to increase left posterior space. That way we could actually turn into something. If I have a concentric left posterior pelvis, whether it's upper or lower, you can drive internal rotation on that right-hand side, but you don't have any space to really turn into. And so chances are what's gonna happen is you'll do some of the cheats that we saw like this lateral tilt example. Step three, and this is where I figured out this step with this individual, is you want to drive left hip approximation activities or hiking. And this is gonna be an early and when I say early, I mean early in the range, internal rotation activity. 
And so when I'm doing any type of hip hiking and I'm preserving relative motion, it's getting the sacrum to side bend one direction or the other. This is kind of like a middle stance activity for those individuals. And so I want to try to drive something where I create that hip hiking action. And that's where the hip approximation was useful. That's where the step up or the step down, the way that I coached it, was also useful. And then once you have that, the final step for these individuals is you're going to orient the pelvis to the right and then turn to the left. And this is going to create a later range of IR. Because when I have that position and then I reach forward in that particular orientation on the right, that's going to drive internal rotation on that right-hand side. It's going to drive posterior expansion on the left-hand side. And it should hopefully improve that individual's movement capabilities so that way they can manage that turn. And in this case, in this particular individual, it helps reduce some of the knee discomfort that he was dealing with. And there you have it folks, those were the key things that we focused on for someone who had more of a flat turn presentation with the pelvis laterally tilting. Do you find case studies like this useful? Are there other movement compensations that you're seeing out there and you're like, huh, I wonder what's going on with that and I wonder how to address it? If so, please comment below and let me know and I'll make some content on it. While you're here, hit the like and subscribe button and check me out at zackcouples.com. There I have full blogs, write-ups, everything else that you would need in order to be successful, to take your client's movement capabilities to the next level, to expedite your warm-ups, and so much more. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in. You've been an incredible, outstanding audience, and I hope that you keep it real but not to the extent where things go wrong, stay hungry, stay learning, stay moving, and I'll see you next time. Deuces.